afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Thursday, February 17, 2022, a little after 3 p.m. Eastern. Remind everybody we have a time we have a uh, reverse aging health call tomorrow night at 9 p.m. on this line. Sitting in total stillness is a practice that we all should choose to engage with. Sometime today, sit down and be very silent and become very still like a statue. We're doing it during this, this meditation. If you move a muscle, even shift your eyes, then start the clock over. This isn't as easy as it sounds, okay? See if you can do it for five real minutes. So maybe sometime today. Five, see if you can do it for just five minutes of absolute perfect stillness. Now, there are times, I'm sure some of you experience this, if you, where you're, you're doing something, okay? And all of a sudden, you're just staring. Have you ever done that? You're aware, but you're not thinking anything. Nothing is come. There's, there's no thoughts from the ego mind or anything. You're, you're just completely, you're still as can be. You're not moving, and sometimes you're not even blinking. And you do that for a while, and then someone will say, hey, Mary, Al. And, you, and then you come out of it. It's kind of like that. And see if you could do it for five minutes. You will, you will find that when you truly do this, you'll discover something that is more valuable than all the money and love in the world. In pure stillness, you stop the mind from chasing after all those things it thinks will make it happy. You start to become the one who causes amazing manifestations to occur in this life. You begin to consciously create your life instead of being a doormat where life tends to walk all over you. You begin to consciously create your life instead of being a doormat where life tends to walk all over you. It's good to know while you're practicing that at the core of your being as a profound stillness, it is already here. You do not have to create stillness. Just let go of the mind. Be totally unfocused and notice what happens when you cannot be disturbed. The stillness is always here, even in the most crazy moments of our lives. The peaceful, calm consciousness is always here. Take today to stop your busy life and turn your awareness inwards you will naturally and effortlessly find the peace that you so desperately seek. Relax, let go of everything, and devote today to finding utter stillness. When, when we are powerless, our ego most wants to change the things in our world. Greg Braden. When, when, we are, when we feel we are powerless, our ego most wants to change the things in our world. The burning energy of desire is essential to this life. Without it, we would have no forward movement. There wouldn't be an urge to take action or create anything. We would all be sitting in the dark, just being very still and barely breathing. We wouldn't want to eat, dance, sing, or be fully self-expressed. The vital essence of desire is what keeps us alive. It is the magical fuel that propels our lives into tomorrow, allowing us to create and recreate ourselves in a multitude of outrageous ways. We are all, we all enter these bodies, and they call that born, born on earth, the body is born into this world with desires. We come out of the womb seeking a, a warm soft, cozy place to snuggle, a breast full of milk to suck on, and a safe place to learn, grow, and be nurtured. 
all our deepest core, at our deepest core, we all yearn to be touched, held, and loved. If these needs are not attended to throughout our childhood, they end up fueling a plethora of adult addictions later in life. We smoke, overeat, and seek sex in a desperate attempt to return to that sweet, cozy, warm breast. Having these core needs met at a very young age are essential components to an enlightened maturity and having a healthy, happy, and fulfilled adult existence. The major challenge here is that most of us didn't get our natal needs met as children. We grew up physically, yet not emotionally. As these basic core needs were continuously denied, they also morphed into a variety of very specific and sometimes complex adult desires. We may become hooked on watching our favorite TV show or obsessed with making money in the stock market or buying another pair of overly priced shoes at the mall. All these efforts to feel good inside only mask, numb, and distract ourselves from truly going to the core and getting our natal needs finally met. When it comes down to becoming the master of your life, one of the essential secrets is learning how to master desire. If you can master your desires, you can take back the steering wheel on your life and be able to pull your vehicle over at any time. Otherwise, we will most likely spend the the, the remainder of our existence driving along, following the traffic, tailgating our life from one desire to the next. Most people feel stuck or powerless in their lives because they cannot put on the brakes, stop the car, pull over at the rest stop. This is because they are slaves to their desires. The moment they wake up in the morning, they start moving from one desire to the next, not even knowing that they have a choice. They spend their entire existence trying to fulfill the continuously extending list of adult desires, never feeling truly nurtured inside and blindly following the traffic into gridlock. Each desire brings misery. There is no fulfillment through desire. You never reach anywhere, and contentment is impossible. Seeing this truth is that running after desires takes you nowhere, you stop. Ocean. The good news is that there is nothing wrong with this scenario. Everyone has to go through the experience of being a slave to desire in order to master it. The slavery is simply our initiation into the desire mastery process. And without it, we would have no desire to be free. It's important that we first understand the mechanics of desire before we can master it. The first thing is that your mind is addicted to desire, and in this pattern, it cannot ever reach total satisfaction. Even though you may get all the adult desires on your list accomplished, a new wish or want will be formed in the very near future. As long as you're accomplished, a new wish or want will be formed in the very near future. As long as your core need is not being met, the mind will continue to find something to fill the emptiness and chase after. This is the nature of the mind. And again, I want to emphasize that there is nothing wrong with the long list of adult desires we have. It is our destiny to go through this experience, living inside this constant pull of wanting things that we think will fulfill us and bring us real joy. The gripping energy of desire is what pulls at our ego like taffy, causing us to spiritually stretch ourselves and evolve as a soul. Eventually, we realize that nothing can fulfill us and we have to move deeper inside ourselves. Meeting our deepest needs and truths at our center. Ironically, desire for freedom becomes the missing fuel for a spiritual awakening. The fiery desire for freedom is that that force 
which will eventually burn through the ego and liberate us from the repetitive cycle of daily suffering. When the desire for freedom is greater than everything on your adult desire list, then real changes happen. This raw, real energy is so intensely powerful and unstoppable that you can directly face and meet every wound, challenge, and insecurity inside you and roar at it without resistance or fear. It's the light from your burning fire of desire that gives you the insight you need to bring clarity into your confusion. You are able to see the beauty and creativity in your inner world and love yourself exactly as you are. When this fire gets hot, it becomes so freeing that it can liberate you, any of us, from any pattern of fear, depression, apathy, insecurity. It makes this planet one of the most exciting and fascinating places to live. For the rational, healthy person, the desire for pleasure is the desire to celebrate his or her control over reality. For the neurotic, the desire for pleasure is the desire to escape from reality. Nathaniel Brandon. Some of us study the nature of desire through the years. And perhaps one of the most enlightening aspects that if you do study it, you'll ever discover about it is this. Sooner or later, it always happens that the one thing you're running from in this life later becomes the thing you run towards and vice versa. It is just a matter of time before the pendulum swings the other direction. For example, in your teens, you may have desired to have more space and less intimate interactions with your family. Through the years, as you got this desire and met and matured along with it, hopefully, one day the pendulum swung back and you realized all you wanted was to spend more time with those people who really knew you during your childhood. The swinging pendulum of desire is always in motion. It may take a day, month, year, or many lifetimes to complete its swing. Yet it always sings. It always swings. This is a very essential secret to know and understand if you want to master your life. The nature of desire is an eternal swing, and this pendulum will never, ever stop swinging on its own as long as you are unaware that it is swinging. Once you are aware that the thing that you're running away from will one day become the thing you're running towards, then you have a chance at not being so emotionally attached to the list of desires you have now. Check it out for yourselves and you will see. One day it will happen. In the very far or near future, you will be running towards that which you were running away from or running away from that which you are, you're running towards. It can easily happen that in the morning you are deeply in love with your wife or husband and by the afternoon you cannot wait to get away from them. If the emotional body gets over-identified with the pendulum swing, we can feel totally lost in this life. We don't know what we really want because we want two opposite things. With a tiny spark of awareness around this pendulum swing, we can transcend the entire process that arises and let whatever is most needed to manifest. The mind may still be a slave to desire, always following one thought after the other. Yet, you can sit back and watch without getting hooked on it. You can, you can be free from the incessant addiction to wanting, 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 searching, seeking, and reaching for a higher peak to climb. Once you bring full awareness into the mind, everything changes. We can see the bigger picture as the clouds clear away and understand why we were chasing after the dried up morsel of moldy cheese for years. With awareness, we can start approaching our desires with more curiosity and have a deeper introspection into why we are the way we are. We can become open-minded, have a more playful, 
lighter approach to this life. The soft, sweet, curious awareness is the golden key element and having true mastery over the mind. With awareness, you can step back from the addiction to following desire and a doorway magically opens to a very spiritual experience of life. You don't get hooked by another desire because you realize they are all going to manifest one day at the right time. You see the power inside you. And, what, and, and that whatever you want in life wants you. And one day, it is going to manifest whether it happens in this lifetime or the next one. Knowing this, you start to relax, breathe deeper, feel this infinite being you truly are. You begin seeing your desires as a fun and enlightening es escapade that is meant to awaken your soul to the vastness of your being. You start to enjoy your journey through this life so much more because your happiness is not dependent on what does or doesn't manifest. Happiness is essentially a state of going somewhere wholeheartedly, one directionally, without regret or reservation, William H. Shelton. Another secret to the mastery of desire comes from knowing how your level of suffering in life solely depends on how attached you are to a certain desire. If you have no attachment, there is no suffering. This wisdom is one of the greatest tools you can use on the path towards enlightenment. The next time you're fuming over something or someone in your life, just notice how attached you are to the desire you have inside. The more you can become aware that your level of attachment is the one thing that's creating all of your suffering, the greater the chance you have for mastery over your life. When you realize the truth of who you are is an all-powerful, infinite being who can manifest anything at pure will, you won't be attached to anything anymore. Whatever desires arise in the mind will simply be fertilizer to grow deeper roots in, or perhaps superficial entertainment to laugh at and enjoy. If you really think about it, nothing in this life is worth losing your cool over. What's the point of letting yourself get overly entangled in anything? If you, if you do freak out over something, it's really the moment for you to celebrate for you are getting a glimpse into the level of attachment you have around a specific pattern of desire and can see into an old natal need you never got met. If you can move even deeper inside yourself, you can understand the karmic lesson your soul has been trying to learn for lifetimes. Life is an endless journey, and the main purpose of it is freeing ourselves from our karma and our drama. The suffering we incur is a clue to understand our patterns and what our next step is to truly becoming free. It's good to know that there already is an inherent wise master inside each and every one of us that sees the pain caused by attachment to desire and responds accordingly with lessening the grip on this life. It's only this divine witness inside of us that can liberate us and keep a vigilant watch over the scavenging mind. Practice today noticing the very moment you suffer about what you desire you are attached to. Choose consciously to either get lost in the drama or stay beyond it. Whatever you do, just remain conscious and you'll be able to free yourself from the pain. Take time this week to explore this vigilant master inside you. Notice the part that is at peace with everything because it knows it is intimately connected to everyone and everything. It doesn't see your thoughts or feelings as separate forms which are cut off from the universe in any way. The master inside you feels the oneness of creation. It is merged with life and thus has no hidden personal motives to need, control, resist, or rid of desire. It simply honors whatever desire is showing up and consciously dives into the core of it, merging with it totally, exploring what it truly wants and needs. The master 
in you knows it's not necessary to act on every desire. The master knows there is a magical manifesting power within, and it will easily bring any desire into manifestation effortlessly. The master is the magician in you who can simply imagine and feel that the desire is already manifested, that it already happened, and knows the universe also accepts that this is the truth and thus brings it into absolute reality. This level of surrender, surrendered confidence, and total conscious conviction woven inside the mind's imagination is the secret element distinguishing the master from the servant. When you can live your life fully from this conscious place, you can make any wish you want manifest into your life. Life hears your every desire as a command and simply manifest it for you at the perfect time and place. The mind craves for formulations and definitions. Always eager to squeeze reality into a verbal shape. A mind is all you need. All else will happen rightly once your mind is quiet. As we're to Raj. To find the master in you, first get very, very quiet. You need silence in order to hear its subtle voice, who is always in the background dancing, yes, to each experience of this life. The master is always embracing the totality of your existence, loving the energy of desire, knowing it's the central fire that will eventually burn away all suffering. The master does not fear any desire. It welcomes desire without getting lost in it. The master knows all desires fade away when the divine truth is seen within. When the master in you awakens, you feel this connection with the God source. Feel deeply at peace with life and are intensely happy with yourself and love your life just the way it is. If you want to master desires in this lifetime, start with making the firm decision that this is the most important thing that you are doing with your time. Hold tight on to this decision and conviction that you are going to master desire. Breathe this intention into your spine. Let it sink deep into your bones. To truly master the energy of desire is absolutely radical and huge. It may perhaps be the greatest accomplishment one can ever make on their spiritual journey. So please be gentle with yourselves during this process. Nobody ever climbed Mount Everest without any training. Practice imagining what your life will be like to be free from attachment to all your desires. Explore that part of you who is already free and can feel more freedom than ever before. As a true master of desire, how will your life be different than what it was last week? Thoughts are very powerful things. And when you open yourself continuously to any one thought, you start believing that it is true, then this magical universe responds accordingly. The universe truly has no other choice than to follow your beliefs. They act like commands to the creation. The more you are convinced that this one thing is true, without a smudgeon or smidgen of doubt inside you, the more quickly the universe supports you in making it manifest. The world loves showing up in the way that you deep down think, feel, and believe it really is. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure that we all are. And the first thing that we care to do, relax the bodies we're in, head to toe, inside and out. Relax the bodies we're in. Now, we know we're not the body, that we are the God source, the heaven, the kingdom of God, the love. And the body, remember, is like a super powerful magnetic sponge. And it draws everything in. The stress, the fear, through the ego mind. And it gets overloaded. And irritable. And frustrated. 
So when you focus on your breath, divine positive energy, that which sustains the vessel that holds the kingdom of God, you move into the now. When you, as soon as you move into the now, it gets very quiet. And you leave the mind alone, the ego alone, and the subconscious mind alone. You still them. You also still the mind chat that we all have. And the only thing you're doing is focusing on your breath moment to moment. Now, are, are, you, are you seduced into the future? No, not in the now. Are you seduced into the past? No, not in the now. Now, it is, you, you feel the body lighten up when you do this. And it will relax because you're not hanging tight onto anything anymore. You're just letting it all fly. And you really don't have any concern. Only in the now can this be possible. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a very wonderful discovery. Now, it is important for us to be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with ourselves at all times. It is also very important that we practice and choose to practice 24-7 to be in the highest of the highest high and the deepest of the deepest deepest and the purest of the purest purest eternal gratitude. Now, when the body's relaxed and we're in the now, none of us are exempt from this. And so what happens is that we've got millions of thoughts passing by, flying by like clouds in the sky. They're not ours. They're programs. They're other people's thoughts. We also have about 60,000 plus thoughts that we generate every day. Now, it isn't difficult for us, even though you're in the now, to grab onto a cloud and just float along with those thoughts, these thoughts that you go, I don't know if these are my thoughts, but my name's attached to them. And then you bring that thought, you move it into reality, you give it power, and you experience it. Now, when you know that you're doing that, you simply say, I'll focus on my breath and I'll be in the now. This is practice. It takes practice. But eventually... You, and as, because when you do it again and, and it'll happen again, you'll just say, I'll focus on my breath and I'll be in the now. And 3,000% of the time you'll be in the now, which means always. Now, when we look at these bodies, we notice seven lights. They go from the tailbone to the top of the head. What are they? They're chakras. What's the definition of chakra? Wheels, wheels of light, and their spirit etheric energy, spirit etheric energy. What are we, the gods that we are, spirit etheric energy? So we flow through these, and it's connected to the body, right? And it's connected to the body's emotions, organs, blood flow, tissue, cell structure, mitochondria, everything, all the way down to the quantum core. So in eventuality, through our own discovery, choosing to discover who and what we are, we will discover that the God that we are is the power of healing these bodies because we know everything there is to know about them. We have a little amnesia right now. So we are the power of healing. Now, picture yourself You've got three paths in front of you. And, and see this through your heart, mind's motion picture. And you've got the path, and it's little, little golden circles you're standing on. And there's three of them. And the one on the left is the past. One in the center is the now. One on the right is the future. Now, they're very, they're very similar because 
you see that the trees have grown over to form a canopy. And the trees are this shimmering gold, the leaves, the bark, everything. The path itself is a brilliant emerald green flaming grass. Now the only difference between any of them is that you look to the left and you see the path of the past, and you say, wow, that has been used a lot. And then you see the path to the future, and that's very similar, it's been used a lot. Now the path you're standing on, the now, it almost looks brand new, because most of us don't stay or even go into the now. We're busy in the past and busy in the future, and we ignore the now. Why do you think so many people are stressed out? It's overly serious about everything. Okay? That's why. And another reason is, is that the ego mind, it will not, it will do everything it can to keep you out of the now. Reason is, is because it does know that the now is where its ending will be. So picture, that's why this happens. So we're being mastered by the ego mind, keeping us out of the now by pushing us into the future that doesn't exist because we create the future and the now and pushing us into the past, it's the past, it's gone. No forward movement. Now some of us, uh, all of us, we reminisce, we, we have memories and you know, we, we, we visit them. We have a library, it's a massive library, each of us do. It's a private library, we go up there on occasion and pass, we take the path on the left of the past and go upstairs, open the door, turn on the light, shut the door, we grab some movies and some pictures and some books off of the shelves, and then we go sit in the easy chair and we watch the movies and we reminisce. Look at the pictures and then read, and we have a good time. This was a wonderful time. I enjoyed it so much. I wouldn't mind doing that again. This time wasn't that great. I know I will not do that again. But you know what we do, though, majority of us? We'll put everything away. We'll turn the light off, shut the door, and move forward in this life. Then we'll revisit it on occasion. But some of us will go there and we'll stay there so long, and I don't believe it's consciously aware. I, think it's, I believe it's unconscious. And we'll stay there so long that we end up bringing that past into a future that doesn't exist, creating that future from that past, reliving that past in that future. So a lot of people will say, no matter what we do, we always end up here. Now, others of us, we all kind of venture into that future path, don't we? We venture in there. We kind of wonder, what, what, when am I going to have this? What would happen if I had this? How would my life change if I was this way? You know, I want this to happen for me. How come it hasn't happened? You know, I, you know what am I going to meet my lifelong romantic partner? When am I going to have enough money to enjoy my life? When am I going to be well enough to enjoy my life? And all along, there's the now. Everything happens in the now. The past, the present, the future. That's why it's so imperative. That's why when you're in the now, we are still. We're not being antagonized. We aren't frustrated. We aren't fearful. We aren't stressed. It's a good place to be. It's a good place to practice being. It is the gateway to discovering the God within each and every one of us. Now, we know that when the soul, our soul, God, enters these bodies, powers them up, everything comes online, is the heaven. Heaven isn't a place. You're the heaven. Where's the kingdom of God? Where is that? Is that down the street, up in the sky? No, you're the kingdom of God. Where is God? Where can I find God? Would you please tell me? God is within you. You want to pray? Pray to the God within you. You want answers? Ask the God within you, that which you are. So we're heaven on earth. The God, heaven, the body, earth. So when we walk this planet, consciously aware, what does that mean? Consciously aware means that we are of and from the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. And we are creating paradise on this planet. Every step we take, and we are shining our light 
What is the light? The love. It's what we're made of. It's the highest frequency. There's nothing higher. And we're flooding this planet. Eight billion of us. Asleep and awake. Not only that, we don't even give credit to the rest of the gods that are inhabiting other physical forms. So the number is hum humongous. Now, some of us may learn, may learn, just may learn in this lifetime that when we do decide to leave the body, we will have already discovered while we're in the body that we are the light. We are the love. So when a light appears, when you're in the sacredness of space, and it says, come follow me, come, come into me, that's the matrix trap. That's one of them. So you, why would you follow a light when you are the light? Doesn't make sense, does it? If you're going to follow anything, it's going to be you. Now, if you took a starship off this planet and you flew out far enough so you could see the entirety of the planet, you would see that it glowed. Not only that, you'd look at all the lights around in the universe, and then you would also see that they would pale in comparison. It'd be like a lit candle in a dark room. Dim, dim, dim. Now we know that parts of the gods that we are asleep, they don't participate, but we love them deeply because they are part of us. Then we have the parts of the gods that we are, that are awake, consciously aware to a certain extent. This is all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. Period. This is the ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Christ, Amoria, Vedantia, Pell, Thoth, Yala, Yeshua, this is the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes. This is all the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, the garden beneath her. All of our loved ones who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we've inhabited. All of the off-worlders, galactics, and celestials. Now, ascended masters. They have ascended into physical form. They have mastered physical form. They have ascended out of physical form. They hold pure consciousness, God form. We have ascended into physical form. We are in the process of mastering physical form. We are creating our experiences to perfect our creation. The light energy base for this planet. Because of the eyes we have, we only see 1% of what is. Now, the light spectrums, infrared, red, violet, ultraviolet, blue, ultra blue, all these different lights, these different light spectrums, we don't see them. They come in shapes, color, sizes, forms, and configuration. They're there. It's just we don't see them. There is a group that we're, we're very intimately connected to, part of it. And this group is the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls. The elementals, the magics, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, pegasus, the unicorn, centaur, minotaur. Now ask yourself if you can stay in that body without air, water, fire, earth, wood, ether. And the answer is a big no. But we're very, very, these bodies that we're in are very dependent on the elementals. Very dependent. Now, the archangels, they're a civilization that vibrated a different frequency than we do, but the gods in their bodies are the same as the gods in our bodies. We're all one. Now, we don't see them like we see each other. We meet with them, and we don't always recognize that we've met with one, but most of the time we will, in most cases. And it could be a random conversation, five minutes. It could be a passing by. It could be someone giving you a helping hand or a hug. It just doesn't matter. 
and it'll dawn on you. This is something that was different about that person. I, I believe they were an angel. And you experience bliss. Now they've been with us ever since we have been. And they have a message. And they deliver the message in many, many, many different ways. And the message is, is an absolutely spectacular, stupendous, splendiferous, magna, glorious, wonderful, joyous to be alive in these bodies. And so I ask people, what's so great about these bodies, they say. And I say, well, do you know that when you leave, of course you don't know, but when you know when you leave that body, the God that you are in that body, you won't, you won't experience any of the things that you've experienced in this life. And these are what they are, making love, kissing, hugging, holding, smiling, laughing, crying, eating a, a nice dinner, having a, a nice glass of wine, enjoying other people's company. Think about that. We don't, we don't see with eyes. We don't touch with hands. None of that stuff it's, it doesn't exist. We don't sleep. We don't eat. We don't, we, we don't do any of the things that we do in these bodies. And we've taken them for so long for granted that we just go, what's the big deal of the body? And it's absolutely phenomenal to be in it and experience these things. That's why these bodies are so enticing to us, the gods, because we get in them. And we forget why we're in them and what they're about and the gratitude that we have for them. Now, they'll surround any one of us at any one time in the tens of thousands or tens of millions because of their vibrational frequency. They can hold a large number in a small area. And if you want them to, ask them. Blink of the eye, they'll be there and you'll be in bliss. Now the off-worlders, galactics and celestials, over a thousand species travel through the solar system every day. Trillions throughout the universe is every day. But we're familiar with a small group, Pleiadians, Syrians, Arcturians, Andromedans, felines, Eta Reticuli, Anunnaki, Nords, Greys, Draco Reptilian, Golden Pyramid Avion. This is a particular group has been assisting us in our evolution, enlightenment, ascension, freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. Now, our number is in Googleplexes. Googleplex fills this entire universe of not even one square inch of sacred space to spare. These are trillions of Googleplexes. It doesn't matter if we say, well, uh, that part of us is a billion light years away. It's a loot, that's, a, that's the illusion, separation. We're one. So we're, we're all gathered. And we're focused on the liberation of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. And our, our, our focus is very intent. It's intense. And nothing can escape it. Nothing. That's why the vibrational frequencies will continue to accelerate at a massive speed. And pure peace, love, and joy will envelop this world. And all life, the highest supreme value of the universe. Now we're all gathered, arm in arm, hand in hand, so to speak, in full compassion. Enlightenment, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, prosperity, abundance. We're all one. We're all God. And we're all love. 
And our God force love light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And it continues to intensify, expand, grow. And nothing can escape it, ever. We immediately form a white fire circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Aria, and this now. This white fire circle is so bright that it grays out the darkness of sacred space. It would take a thousand trillion suns to even come close to its brightness. We're flooding this planet, head to toe, inside and out, infinity and beyond, with pure, deep, eternal love. We begin to ascend above the planet. We're immediately met with this massive ocean of glitter. Now, this isn't like an ocean of glitter that we would see on this planet. It is way beyond that. And the only way we can come close to describing it is three visions. One, a massive grand finale fireworks display that we have never seen anything like. A massive laser light show display, the same, we've never seen anything like it. And then a ballroom globe, we've seen those. They slowly turn and reflect all the light in the room around everywhere. Now, this one is a trillion times larger, a trillion times more intense. So you combine all that into one massive crescendo. And that's about as close as we'll get to describing this ocean of glitter. Because we are the ocean of glitter. We swim in it. We're part of it. It's part of us. And so we look at the reflective points of this ocean of glitter. We see these little tiny microscopic mirrors perfectly etched. We enter them. And we discover a phenomenal experience that all of us are teaching and learning from each other. Ourselves and each other. We're either students, teachers, teachers, students, or both. And not just humanoid, not just these bodies, but all inhabitants of physical form. We're told that the tree is life. It is the God that enters the tree to give us the tree life, <coughs> excuse me, so it can, can experience the tree's physical form. This is with everything, cats, dogs, bugs, Flies, birds, cows, bears, everything. We learn from them. But we're so, we're so misdirected into the material external world that we don't look at them. We don't notice that. And they're a part of us. The gods within those physical forms are a part of the gods within us. So we're constantly learning. Never ending. It's phenomenal. And how do you know that? Go to a park or just sit and stare out your window and just view life. You'll catch on pretty quickly. We're immediately met with the emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all, the gods that we are in these bodies, that we are the power of healing. We are then met with the violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all, the gods that we are within these bodies of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. We are then met with the white fire. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all from head to toe inside now, we are protected, infinity and beyond. This white fire is a white fire armor. It emanates from the God force love light energy within each and every one of us. Pure, deep, eternal love. The highest vibrational frequency. Now, no demon possessions, no attachments, no lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies, 
They can't come near us. The vibrational frequency of love is so high that they would vaporize. They would, they would implode on themselves so they don't come around us. Ever. But only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough, whether consciously or unconsciously, with hatred, greed, anger, fear, envy, hurry, worry, revenge, dishonesty, you will create a breach in your white fire armor, enough so to allow lower dark matters, five matter frequencies come flooding in. Now, if you do decide to do this, you're immediately met with double column of light. First part of this column of light is the purple transfusing flame. We created this column of light to remind us all that we can bring in the purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all of these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies into neutralized substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are no more. The second column, part of this column of light is the violet ray. We created this part of the column to remind us all that we can bring in the violet ray right behind the purple transmuting flame. We can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, restoring our vibrational harmony to the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest deepest, purest of the purest purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. We are then met with the golden light, pink light. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all, the gods that we are within these bodies, that we are the sun, sunlight sunset and the sun rises, the rain and the rainbows, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams, the trees, the forests, the soils, the skies, the clouds, the animals. We are everything. Everything is us. So the next time you see a vista or a view uh, of a sunset or a sunrise or an ocean front or a mountain view or starlit night sky or a rainbow, through the heart mind, when you see it, try this. I am the God that is the God that I am. That is the God that I am. You'll have an entirely different experience. Far beyond what you do when you say, isn't that beautiful? Now we continue to ascend above the planet. Some of us step outside our physical form and hover effortlessly above it if we're carrying physical form. The reason we do this is because it's absolutely fun and we can. We come into full contact with this massive crystal and light tower. We created this tower. It's larger than the solar system and beyond. In the center column of this, co this tower is this massive oblong sphere. In the center of the sphere is a golden white bowl of light. Next to that... Next to the golden white ball of light, it is surrounded by numerous multicolored rings of light that seem to go through infinity and beyond. All of this has created a super bright white misty cloud that's sparkling and arcing. It looks it's electrified, and it's absorbed into our heart mind. And it feels like a warm embrace that never ends. We discover that the golden white bowl of light is the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, and the purest of the purest purest eternal love. Then comes gratitude, well-being, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, enlightenment, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, massive. prosperity, massive abundance. And then we discovered that all of that is a reflection of the gods that we are within these bodies. At the top of this column, we designed it so the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees. 
as it's doing right now, infinity and beyond. This golden ocean is the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, and the purest of the purest purest, eternal love. And it's flooding this planet, everything on it, in it, above it, and below it, the highest value in the universe, life, with this love. Now, we are drops of this golden ocean, and we also contain the essence of this golden ocean, The drops are the golden ocean. The golden ocean is the drops. And the only illusion is separation. Now, we see our meditative sphere. It said center circle. We created this sphere over four years ago. It holds over 1,800 of our meditations in perpetual motion. Hundreds of millions of them is on and off world. And the whole direction is complete liberation of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. Complete liberation. All lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies become no more. This is what we're experiencing. And it'll open up to a God planet paradise. And that is what we will experience. You can tap into this anytime by being still, focusing on the now. Believe that to heal yourself is easy. We all have powers inside of us that are beyond amazing. Our souls are so powerful that any old trauma, dis-ease, or negative experience can be instantly transformed. Choose today to be the most powerful healing experience of your life. Let your mind go wild into the unknown with this possibility. The moment it does, you will feel and know in your heart's your true spiritual nature is already complete and whole. I'll join you in the meditation and return to close us out.
take an easy breath in through the nose and an easy breath out through the mouth. Move easily and slowly. Stop fighting with everyone and everything in your life today. Be totally relaxed and completely aware that there is a current of energy taking you down the river of this great existence. The body naturally knows how to find inner peace when you surrender and stop fighting this moment of your existence. Take this with you for the rest of the day, into the evening and night, and the following morning. We will return here Friday, February 18th, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern, to continue our global guided meditation call.